Hey there, it's Bruce from Nature Calls, and Ethan from EDC Adventures is going on the AZT, or the Arizona Trail, and he wanted to do it with a, a minimalist tarp, so he got a hold of me, and we put together a tarp, went off of what he wanted as a design. He wanted a seven foot by seven foot with eight tie outs, so basically a tie out in each corner and a tie out in, in between each one of those. Um, so I gotta send it out to him right away because he's leaving in about a week, and uh, but I need to get some pictures for the gram, you know, so let's do some quick setups and then I'll show you how I built it after that. All right, so here's the here's the tarp and uh, I use the 1.1 ounce uh, Sil Poly PU4000 fabric and uh, can't remember what lines are, I'll put all that down in the description. All in though, it's around nine ounces for a seven by seven foot tarp. Let's do some quick setups. Where's my ridge? There's my ridge line. Now put uh, Ethan's channel link down below. So if you want to follow him on his Arizona trail. Um, very cool. And then I'll go over some of the, basically some of the reasoning that I did certain things and uh, why and why I did these things. So here you got your basic A-frame. Um, when I go minimalist tarping, 90% of the time, if I don't have trees or a rock to work with, this is what I do. I know I've done tons and tons of different tarp setups, but really when I've got, it's raining, I need to get something up that's gonna protect me that is, uh, this is, this is really can't be beat. Now I've made each of these loops capable of putting a uh, trekking pole through on every single one of the tie out points. And then using these line locks, which I found when I'm doing this, this minimalist tarping is easier to stake to the ground and then have this adjuster right up here. You'll get things done a lot faster and adjusted quicker. This is all, of course, tacked to the ground. I could tack that one down too for storm. This has plenty of room for you, a dog, and your gear. This is another one that I really like. It's just to lift up one side. Uh, they get some, you can get take a view, especially if you're like on a river or by a lake, but you still have plenty of coverage. So just lift it up a little bit by sticking those stakes out. Another quick one definitely gives you lots of room. Ability to look out. You've got protection on two sides. Um, those uh, tarp clips that I've been getting from Dutchware Gear. If you had one of those, you could you could pull up the the back or pull up the back and give yourself more room. So you can get these little tarp clips. You can, you can get like the cheap ones at a hardware store or get the really cool ones from Dutchware Gear. That will give you, that gives you plenty of room. So if you had two people, this would be pretty sweet. Now in reality, the, the minimalist tarping, this is what I would do. I wouldn't do, you know, be in an open field by any means at all. I'd try and find protection, try and find a tree, a rock, something. Um, Cause when you're under a small tarp, um, even a big tarp, you, you just won't set up out in the middle of the field. Never, never see it done. Um, and I don't, I definitely don't look for that. I mean, if you had to, you had to. Um, but you can always find some place to find a little bit of protection. And this is a real easy, easy one. Gives you plenty, plenty of room to do all kinds of things. Good protection. Yeah, so up here, I just basically did kind of like a Marlin spike hitch real quick through the loop. Boom, boom, boom. Done quick. All right, this is the, uh, the fabric. It's the, uh, one, it's 1.1 ounce Sil Poly. PU4000. It's uh, one of my favorite fabrics for making tarps out of. It's lightweight enough that it's still lightweight. I could have gone a lot lighter, a lot lighter, but um, I feel this is really. It's it's got the ripstop. It's got the nice um, silicone sealing. Um, everything about it is you know a good high performance lightweight tarp but you get like, I got six yards of it. So now I've got to cut it down and uh, it's going to be a seven by seven tarp. So I'm going to cut down to 85 inches, which is seven feet plus an inch for the hem, uh, two sections of that. So 
don't have a lot of room in my house, I'll just come out to the driveway. But this is the jig that I made a while back, and so it'll, it'll help me make a nice, uh, I'm gonna mark it, and uh, it's like a big long ruler. So, all right, time to mark it up. All right, a little quick overview. This is just a Kenmore um, sewing machine, it's your basic Kenmore. I am thinking about getting a new one. Um, this one isn't that great for going through a ton of wet webbing, so I'm gonna get one that's a little bit more heavy duty for the webbing aspect. Uh, I've got an, uh, uh, a sharp needle. I think they're called what are they called? Aki sharps or you know, so you don't want you don't want the needles that are round. Or they're basically rounded. The this standard needle that you get with a um, sewing sewing machines or doing like denim and cotton. They actually aren't sharp, sharp, and so they push fibers away. Uh, what you want for this type of fabric, the ripstop, the nylons, you want a, a sharp where it'll actually poke a hole. Um, that's what you want. So I've got one of those needles in. This is the Mara 70 uh, Guterman thread. It's uh, of course uh, something that can be outside, has some UV protectant. I've got my uh, stitch length uh, set to eight stitches per inch. Got all my tensions all figured out. Um, if you have any other questions, I've got a whole video on kind of how I do sewing and all that kind of stuff. Not a not a professionally trained or anything like that. Okay, so we were outside and we cut this beautiful cloth um, to the 85 inches. So so Ethan wants a seven by seven foot tarp. So we've got it cut. Uh, two pieces are seven feet long, but to make seven feet wide, you have to put two of them together and then cut them again. So to before I cut it again, I'm gonna go ahead and do the, the ridge line hem. Um, and that's a flat felt. And I'll show you up close how I do that. So once we get that done, then we can go to the other seven foot because they don't make fabric that's seven feet wide. They basically make it like 54 inches wide. Um, we need 85, so that's why we're gonna have to put two pieces together. So let me show you up close on this um, 1.1 ounce silk poly. Okay, so this 1.1 ounce silk poly has a dull side and then it has a, that's the dull side and this is the shiny side. So you just kind of decide on what you want on the outside. I don't think it makes a big difference. I have a feeling this has the silicone a little bit closer. I like having the dull side out so it's not shining. So what we need to do to begin this um, hem is put the two sides we want outside facing each other. Okay, so right here on my zipper foot, there's little lines. In this first pass, I'm gonna do, it's just a little less than a quarter inch for this first pass. And this is down the long, both the long sides, or one, one the long side, because we're gonna make a, like one big long seven foot tarp. Make sure I got everything lined up. You've got a way to drop a needle, that really helps out, I find. And I don't really go for the pinning anything. This this material is you don't you want as few holes as possible in your material. So if you pin it, you're just gonna get that many more holes in it. I can just kind of shift this back and forth and keep it in line. And it seems to work out just fine. Lock stitch. Good, okay, now I'm just gonna run it down. I check every once in a while. Just gonna check, I'm right on target. So, I mean, if you wanna do clamps or pins, you know, that's, that's, that's your deal, I don't do that. Okay, for the, so there's the, the first hem. Now, we do basically turn it around on itself like that. So turn it around on itself, and then I'm going to sew the next spot over on my foot so it sews outside that inner hem just a little bit. And I'm gonna do that all the way down. Okay, so now I'll just fold that over, get it all nicely folded and lined up. I'm not a fast sewer. 
So I'll just get that all nicely lined up and then I'll ride it right along this side of my zipper foot or my uh, sewing machine foot. Just line it up again. Make sure everything's all good. Away I go. Okay, so there's the second one. So now we gonna butterfly it open and lay that down. Now I'm gonna sew right along that edge. And uh, some people call that a flat filled or French seam or a semi flat filled or pseudo flat filled. I don't really care. Um, but it makes a nice, pretty watertight um, hem. Uh, wherever these little threads are going through, you gotta, you gotta seal that up. But it's, it's pretty, pretty strong, pretty nice. So now I'm just gonna sew right down that edge. So now I'm going to having to push half of the fabric through this slot here. And so you just got to, I take, I go a little bit slower and then that way I can manage everything nicer. I'm not in any hurry. Now just kind of keep pushing this up, pushing that out, flattening it. Okay, so here is the end of the seam so it's there's the first one we sewed and then the second one's under in underneath here actually the first one's underneath here the second one's right there and then the third one's the one you can see right there and so it makes a, a real strong binding so now i'm going to trim it down so it's seven by seven and i'm going to make some reinforcements and uh we need like three of these for this tarp it's a minimalist tarp. So I'm gonna make three, cut out three of these, and one of these I'm gonna cut in quarters, and that will be for the, the corner tie-outs. And then the other two I'll just cut in half, and that'll be for like the ridge line and for the midway uh, tie-out points. Now I'm just going to put a little silicone. What is this? This is the uh, seam grip with sill. And stick it right on that corner. And squish all the little bubbles out. And I'll go around and do that to all the spots where I'm putting reinforcements. <clears throat> and. Uh, It'll be nice. So I'm also making sure that I'm putting, like this is the shiny side, I'm putting the shiny side to shiny side. So um, not that I really know that's gonna make a big difference, but um, might as well. I'm going to be using these line locks. Uh, you'll see how those work later. Um, but with these minimalist tents, you're going to be using your trekking poles most likely. So we want to have ample, stuff to be able to sew in to tie onto the tie out and then be able to put your checking pole in. So I'm just gonna come up with a kind of a nice set. That looks good. Maybe it's a little bit less. That looks good. So we want it loose enough so we can so we'll be able to put the checking pole through to set up, have the line lock. Uh, not so loose that it's all over the place and yeah i think that'll be good right there and then enough to go on okay now to do my tie outs do a five inch grow grain burn the edges And using these little line locks, and I'll show you later on when I do a setup, but I found when I do these small tarps and out when I'm out in the field, it's you, you 
you need to be able to adjust things quickly um, to get it set up really nicely. And also, I do a, a spread like that. I'm a, I'm a sailor, I have sailboats, I have sails, and I know a lot of people just go like that. Um, it's probably okay, but like with my sails, the corner of the clue is spread out to, and that makes sense to me just because that distributes the, the stress um, more radially. I'm also leaving a gap so uh, you can put the trekking pole in there. That's the other thing about doing these small tarps is you've got to be able to put your trekking pole in there too. Um, you'll see all that later. our way around. I'll go a little ways up. I'll go across. Then I'll go up. but I'm catching the reinforcement and the webbing or the grow grain. I know sometimes the webbing, you see a lot of those zigzag, like really thick, but with this type of fabric, if you do that really thick, back and forth, 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 that, that'll just create a hole. Uh, so I don't do that. It's not necessary, I found, to just do your regular old stitches. could go do little X's, things like that. I mean, that's definitely doable. I mean, I could do like that. Back it up. And come back down. I think that just makes a lot more holes than what's necessary, but it can be done. So. Yeah, if you have your tensions all set right, and um, you know, that's, that's just a strong, it's strong. I'd rather mend it and re-sew it than to punch a bunch of holes into this fabric. 